All right, welcome back to the 247 build. Today we're gonna drill some holes in this hull for the through hulls, both for the intakes of the in, intakes and I guess exhaust of the pumps because they're reversible, as well as the vents on the side of the boat. Uh, we got our through hulls right here. Here's the plastic ones that go out the side. Here's the brass ones that go through the bottom. Uh, you always wanna add a shut off valve so you can shut it off if you need to take a bag out or some pump fails or something. Just a fail safe so you don't sink on the lake. Uh, what we found works best for doing this is these magnets. You can pick them up at Home Depot. It allows you to put a magnet on the top side of the boat as well as the underside of the boat to really dial in exactly where you're going to drill that hole to make sure you're not interfering with anything under the boat or, you know, up in the engine bay or wherever you may be putting these. Uh, for us, it looks like the best location to uh, put some through hulls is near the V-drive as well as behind the exhaust. So we're going to play around with these magnets try to get an idea of exactly where we can get three of them, and then we'll start drilling. Uh, we went to Home Depot this morning, picked up a brand new hole bit kit. They're about 50 bucks. Uh, last thing you wanna do is drill holes in your hull with dull blades. We'll walk through you know, exactly what to look out for and how to do this through the gel coat without messing it up here shortly. But for now, we're just gonna get the magnets on the boat, identify where we're gonna put these, and uh, get it all set up. So now you can see we're near the V-Drive and we're going to play with our magnets. These magnets are strong enough to have one on the bottom and one on the top. So Sam is underneath the boat with the other magnet and he is moving them to my direction to make sure we find a flat spot that's going to be um, out of the way of everything, both on the top and bottom side. This way we can verify 100% on both sides of the boat that we're not gonna have any issues. Um, so we're gonna do two, two of them on this side of the V-Drive and one of them on the other side. So here we're doing the next magnet, making sure again that we're out of the way. On this one, on, on every through hull, you wanna also make sure that your shutoff valve is gonna open and close. You have enough room with the V-Drive or the hoses or anything else that might be in the way. Here we have two next to each other, so we wanna make sure that they're not gonna hit each other or anything like that, and we can ensure that we can shut them off in an emergency situation. Uh, we'll put one of the through hulls on the other side, and then we're gonna leave these magnets there. We're gonna go ahead and crawl under the boat, and we're gonna circle the magnets with a Sharpie, and then we'll pull the magnets off, and we'll use that circle to drill our holes for these through hulls. This ensures that they're exactly where we wanted them and that we're not going to hit anything and it gives us the perfect setup to get these holes drilled. All right, we got our holes marked on the bottom of the boat. We got our drill ready. Here's our through hull. We're gonna use 3M 5200, which is a permanent marine caulk on the bottom side of this. Um, you can see, if I take this off here. It actually has a groove for the caulk right here. So you're gonna put the caulk in here push it up on the bottom of the boat, make sure it squeezes out a little bit and clean up the excess. 5200 is a permanent adhesive, so uh, it should last forever. That's what, they're, that's what they use on a factory on all this stuff. We have our hole drill here. We're just gonna find the right one that, that fits and it isn't too big. Looks like an inch and a quarter is a little bit too small. So if we move to the inch and a half, we should be perfect. Make sure it's nice and tight. Got a nice sharp bit. <clears throat> this kit does come with an extra bit in case you get it dull, but drilling through the fiberglass, you're not gonna have that issue. Um, we're gonna go climb under the boat, drill them through, pop these up. And then again, you're gonna need two people here. Uh, you can see this has a little, um, kind of recesses here. So if you can get like a pliers or a wrench or something in here to hold it on the top on the bottom side. And then we're gonna, you know, tighten this on the top side with the crescent wrench. And that will ensure 
a nice tight fit. All right, you can see our two magnets here. Uh, Sam, can you hand me the, one of the through holes? I just want to make sure that this magnet isn't too close to that black uh, thing that you were talking about. So you can see both of our, our magnets here where we're going to put our holes. You can see this is kind of close to this flange. We're just going to grab the through hole here on this side. And uh, uh, you can't see that car because it's in the way, but we have a good at least half an inch away from the pedal wheel here. Um, so that won't be an issue. So we're going to pull this magnet off. We have our mark from our Sharpie. We're going to drill backwards through the gel coat. And then we're going to drill forwards through the fiberglass. If you go forwards through the gel coat, it's going to chip or cause issues and it'll look like shit. So we're going to go backwards through the gel coat. Make sure you got safety glasses. Um, a respirator can be helpful as well. So we're going to start just drilling forward a little bit just to get this, uh, this drill bit set. Okay, now that we're going there, um, we're going to go backwards. Backwards through the gel coat. Now we're through the gel coat as you can see here. Um, you can see the fiberglass. You can see how thick the gel coat is. So now we're going to go through the fiberglass and then we'll get these things set. Uh, one down to go. I talked to a lot of people on the phone and they're pretty nervous on this process so hopefully this helps. Uh, the magnets are key to make sure you got your placement right. You know obviously check and make sure that you got enough room between them, that you got you know big enough hole for them to fit through, that it's flat. You want to make sure it's nice and flat so that you get a good seal uh, when you cock it with the 5200. Those are really the only things to wor worry about you know. I mean you want to watch the ribs of the boats to make sure you're not halfway on those because that's going to cause an issue. You got to do the same thing on the other side to make sure you have a flat space for the nut to go. Um, you know, but if you take your time and use these magnets and just, uh, you know, place everything where it's going to go, make sure you have room for your shutoff valves. It's, uh, it's not too difficult. One thing that we didn't show you yet that you can add as well is, you know, we have a straight up shutoff valve, so it makes it a pretty tall um, installation. You can get 90s that will turn this and then you can put the shutoff valve on the 90 and a lot of the times that'll work better for your situation depending on what's in the way and then you can run the hose from there to the pump so if you uh don't have the height and you, you have a lot more length just go to home depot or whatever get a 90 and um that should work for you we're gonna do our second hole here <coughs> All right, one more to go on the other side and we're gonna uh, get these mounted. All right, we're under the boat again. Uh, I got a rag, paper towel with some solvent. I'm just gonna clean up the area around the hole. Holes. Make sure there's no contaminants that will cause the adhesive to have any issues. Uh, we got our through holes here. They fit perfectly. We got Sam on the other side. He is going to put the nut on, tighten it down, make sure we're tight. Hey Sam, I just f I forgot that pliers I grabbed to hold it. It's on the swim deck. Can you hand it to me? Yes. Forgot a tool that we're going to need. <clears throat> we got our 3M 5200 permanent sealant. We got it in white, match the hull. Um, not even sure what other colors it comes in, honestly, but uh, it does come in white. So that's the right one, right? Yep. Thanks, Sam. <clears throat> You'll see a little recess in this uh, through hull fitting here. We're going to apply the. 5200 into that recess and make sure it's 
overfilled so that it pushes and squeezes out. Last thing we want is a, a leak. And as I said, this is permanent, so taking these things out if you have a leak is uh, extremely difficult. So we got it uh, filled. Just gonna go around, make sure it's <coughs> Got enough on there. I'll push it through here. I have a pliers that actually fits in here and it'll hold against the little um, notches that are in here so that Sam can tighten it with his wrench up above. Uh, we're gonna test fit it, make sure it squeezes out. Get a good squeeze on all sides. I'll put this in here to hold it. As you can hear, Sam is tightening the nut on it right now. You hold it one more time. All right, here comes the next one. <coughs> hold on a second, let me push it through and get it set. Just squeeze it around and make sure I get a good squeeze everywhere. <coughs> okay. Good there? Yeah, I think so. All right, third one coming up. <clears throat> of course, one thing that you do want to watch out for, uh, it's easy to do if you're on a trailer, but uh, you know, if you have it off the trailer for some reason or somehow, you want to make sure these aren't where the bunks go on the trailer. It can cause some issues. The reason that we offset these a little bit is on the other side there's uh, some like rough fiberglass area that wouldn't get a nice tight fit on that so we just offset it a little bit you're generally going to fill these when you're stopped so placement doesn't matter a ton uh, as long as you know you got a clear spot to put them and you know again you want to make sure that it's not in front of the paddle wheel or would cause any issue with your speed control um, at all. All right, we got this one tight. We're good to go. All right, guys, welcome back. We got the uh, through holes drilled to the bottom for our uh, water intake. We're gonna go ahead and mount our vents. A um, couple things you wanna make sure of. You wanna make sure the vents far enough forward so that when you're underway, the bag doesn't drain under pressure. If we were to mount the vent back here, there's a chance that because of the, way the hose ran that the pressure is going to be on the vent and it'll actually drain the bag while we're underway um, so we're going to go ahead and mount it underneath our cleat here we want to also make sure that we're running it underneath the rub rail for all of our vents for the ballast system to make sure that the water isn't just dripping all over your rub rail and making a mess it'll keep it a lot cleaner overall um, and then obviously like always you want to make sure that there's nothing on the other side of this that we're going to damage if we drill through in this spot uh, we've cleared that out, made sure that there's nothing in the way, made sure the wiring's out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and drill a hole, and then we'll hook up a hose barb to this to our bag for the vent. And we'll be just about done here on the plumbing side and uh, shortly getting this thing to the next project. So as always when we're drilling through gel coat, you want to put this bit through forward. And before you get to this bit, run it backwards so that we are going through the gel coat backwards and make sure that we don't chip out the gel coat. When 
them down. One to go. All right, we're gonna go put the vents in, get it plumbed up, move on to the next part of this project. All right, we located the silver through hull um, in front of the driver there. And there's nothing really in the way, so we don't really need to use the magnets here. We're just going to go ahead and drill a hole three inches back, same level here, to install this through hull. That way when you're, we're going to run the hose um, up into the very part of the bow, loop it around and bring it back here so it doesn't drain when you're going like we talked about. Um, but this way when it does overfill, it's close to the driver and you can really hear it, you can see what's going on. And uh, that way it would be easier to tell when it's full. So we're gonna go ahead and drill this hole. We've made a mark here with our Sharpie. Perfect timing, of course. Because we're below the rub rail here, we're gonna install some uh, some glue to make sure it doesn't leak. We'll stick it in, make sure it faces that way so we can easily connect our hose to the uh, bow ballast. And we'll be wrapped up. One thing to note on this with your through hulls at least, this takes about six days to fully cure. so. Don't throw them in and go head out on the lake the next day. All right, we got our through holes mounted. We got our underwater ones mounted. Uh, we're gonna put on the check valves. Make sure you have plumbing tape for those. We'll film that and talk about it. Um, the next step is getting it plumbed up. All right guys, we just wrapped up drilling the holes for the uh, intakes for our ballast system as well as the vents. Um, and I talk to you guys on a regular basis on the phone and I know it makes you guys nervous. So hopefully what we documented makes it, you know, a step-by-step -step process for you guys. Uh, it's nothing to be scared of as long as you take the processes that we laid out. Make sure you're not gonna drill through anything when you're going through the hole. And uh, just run that bit backwards so you don't damage the gel coat. Um, it's nothing to be afraid of. And we do the exact same thing when whether we're mounting liquid lumen lights, um, through hulls for the ballast, you know, holes for a thruster, whatever else you might want to put, you know, on the outside of your boat. Just follow that exact same process as far as drilling the holes goes, and you'll have success every time. Again, the two chemical or the two adhesives you want to use is 4200 and 5200 from 3M. Uh, the 4200 is removable, um, but it's it's for underwater uh, as well and the 5200 is permanent so if you use 5200 plan on never removing it so when we do things like underwater lights and things like that that may die or go out or something that we may need to service we use the 4200 so that we can get those off if we ever need to uh, when we're wanting through hulls and things like that we use the 5200 worst case scenario if we don't use those uh, we would pull all the valves and everything off and cap them and just leave them we're not gonna you know patch the gel coat or something like that in the future um, so we have all that wrapped up uh, we're going to move on to getting the ballast system plumbed getting the pumps mounted getting uh you know everything else wrapped up i do want to make a note here that we did just remove these vents on the side of the boat as i showed you guys in a previous video the front ones are all pushed in and dented and this mesh that they put behind this just doesn't hold up well we could take the mesh and um, you know re-adhere it to the frame but we thought we'd do something a little bit different and cooler so we're going to take them off we're going to design something have it water jetted and um, have it customized thanks for watching hit like subscribe make sure you don't miss the uh the next process in this it's going to be a cool awesome boat hit me up if you guys have any questions or concerns as far as you know drilling holes in your boat um, be happy to help you guys out however we can thanks